Today we're going to be installing canards, or what they call dive planes, on a 6th generation Camaro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott, and today we're going to be installing canards, or what they call dive planes, on a 6th generation Camaro. Now, basically they're very simple to install. Uh, you, you can see I've got them sitting up here right now just for display, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to be able to install these. They go on with rivets, and what I've done now is I've just gone ahead and taken some two-sided stick tape and stuck them on there so we can get them adjusted and see exactly where we wanted them. Okay, so I, I'm recommending that you do that. You just stick them on with some two-sided stick tape. And then at that point, you'll have your access to your screws right here on the sides, and or not screws, but your, your holes that we're gonna be able to drill into the bumper. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. The kit comes with the, uh, the rivets that you're gonna need. Uh, for the uh, and there are seven thirty seconds uh, rivets, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna drill the holes and uh, run it through a, a rivet gun, and it's and it's pretty much done. So it's a very simple installation. All right, guys. Before, like I was telling you, we've got these on here just sticks, uh, double sided stick taped on, so we could get them exactly where we wanted them. But I went ahead and I pulled the wheel, uh, wheel fender back here, and there's just three torque screws that hold this together that you can see inside there. And you can see that they have, um, we'll show you on the other side, there's actually five holes on that's pre-drilled into this canard here, but there's more on the other side. And that is due to what's actually inside, um, inside the bumper. Okay, when you feel up inside here, and you should do this, don't just blindly drill into it. Uh, feel up there and make sure that you know exactly where you can drill your holes, that it's not going to be going through something, okay? Now, what we determined here is that we can get to these two screws up here at the top. We can get to the two down at the bottom, but this one here is going to be going through the air box, and it's going to be almost impossible to get anything through there. So we're only going to do the, the top two and the two bottoms here. But we are going to go ahead and we're going to use all the rivets down here in the bottom. Now, on the other side, you'll see that we've got that same kind of issue, but we know that the two center ones we can't use, but we can use the outer three. So um, when we do that, we'll be able to, to uh, show you that. And more that's more than enough. We're actually going to be overkill on the other side, but we're just going to make it look like it's balanced. Um, other than that, uh, I guess it just you want to be very careful. We've got these on here. There's a couple different ways you could have done this. You could have sat them up there and then marked your holes and then drill all the holes and go ahead and do it. I'm, I've already got them on here like this. I've used a clear uh, high adhesive um, two-sided stick tape. So I like that it's already there and it's stuck. So I'm going to go ahead and be able to drill them right here and I don't have to pull this back loose. So now I'm going to have the benefit of having the tape as well as the, um, um, the rivet. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my drill here. Um, and you want to be careful. You want to make sure that you, you know, you, uh, if you're doing what I'm about to do, you want to make sure that your chuck does not come up and hit the bottom of your um, uh, of the canard itself, okay? So I'm gonna drill right here into this. I'm gonna kinda use my finger as the sacrificial lamb here, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill right into it. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Scott from the Corvette channel. How many of you Corvette owners already have these battery-operated puddle lights right here, or wanted to be able to get puddle lights that would work and go on and off with the, with the car door, and be totally powered by the car and not have the batteries go dead on you from time to time. It's always a pain in the butt. Not to mention, take a look at this, these are ugly as sin being stuck on there like that, right? So we actually have uh, the new uh, puddle lights that actually get drilled into the bottom of the door and they are powered by the car itself and they go on and off. And so you don't ever have to worry about it. Not to mention 
that the cylinder on them are much bigger and so they project a much clearer, beautiful image on the ground. So um, if you guys are in need or want a set of those, reach out to me. I'm gonna put that information here on the screen and we'll be able to get you going. So you, you can take a look here on what they look like. Uh, they just look awesome. So like I said, if you need them, then just reach out to us and we'll be able to help you out. So now what I'm gonna do is just to make sure that I, I don't have my, my canard moving on me, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put one, the one rivet right in there like so, okay? And this will pretty much lock that in place like that, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to the next one. Just like that. And then we can set this one in place, okay, just like that, okay. And then we're going to go down to the bottom one here, just like that. Got another rivet, just like that. set to go. So now we can go ahead and use our rivet gun. Okay, so I'm going to set this top one first. Just like that. Okay. Now if you've got a manual rivet gun, not a big deal. You shouldn't have any problems getting it in there. I just finally broke down and bought a Air riveter. All right, and that, like I said, is pretty much done on this side. So I'm just now going to go ahead and I'm going to rivet, drill out the rivets over here, um, here in this area here. Okay, so clear the plastic out of my drill bit, just like that. like that. Then again I'm going to use a rivet to go ahead and lock it in place because I don't want it to move. I don't want I don't want to uh, want it going all crazy on me. And even if you want to what you can is you can go ahead and you can put that one rivet in and lock it just like so. If I can get my Rivet, but let me see if I can get out of you guys' way so you guys can see it. It's like that. Okay. Now that thing is pretty well set. So all we're going to do now is we're just literally going to go ahead and drill the other holes. this. Okay. Okay. And now we're down to our last one. We're going to put that in there. There we go. We're on the driver's side now. And so like I was telling you, you know, you want to make sure that you feel back behind there to make sure that you have clearance, right? Um, and so on this side, there's actually, what do we got here? We've got actually eight holes but we're only going to use the top three on this side and the top three on the on the bottom side of it. We're going to leave the two middle ones uh, because there's something behind there on this. So like I said, you want to take those torque screws out of this the wheel liner and feel up in there and make sure that you've got clearance, okay? And then we are going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put four, four rivets up here in front also. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this one... Um, this one's set here first. Now this one is the very important one. I should have said that on the other side. This is where it's gonna make 
you know, where it's actually going to sit. So you want to make sure that you hold it, make sure that you get it exactly where you want it, because there's no going back, guys. Okay, just like that. All right, so now at that point, what I can do is I can go ahead, and I didn't rivet it in the first on the other side, but I will on this side, just so I don't have to fight this. Okay, so now this is pretty well, pretty well set. I can go ahead and I can go down here. Okay. And we'll go ahead and we'll put another rivet in. And then at that point, we are totally set. We don't have to worry about nothing moving on us. Okay, just like that. Now we can go ahead and we can drill all of our holes and we don't have to worry about it. And you don't want to just drill blindly into here, like I said, guys. Just take your time. Uh, you know, go slow. Okay. Just like that. There we go. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put our rivets in. All right. And then the last one right here. Okay, and uh, at that point we can go ahead and we can work on the front. All right, so we put we put four of them in there on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the same thing on this one. Okay, like that. And let's go ahead just for safekeeping, guys. Let's go ahead and put the the, the rivet in so we don't have anything moving on us. That's it. I got a little bit of plastic over here. I'll we'll just wipe that off. These things are on, they're really nice and tight. They're not going anywhere. Here's my new one restrictor that I just got. Please check out the link below and also mention the Corvette channel so you can get your 10% discount when you go to order yours. All right, guys. Well, that's, that's about as simple of install as you're gonna get. It only took maybe 15 minutes to go ahead and do both sides and uh, it's just a real simple installation. You just wanna make sure that you check behind the bumper to make sure that you've got clearance, which you should, but just make sure that you know exactly where you're drilling. Other than that, I just wanted to cover this real quick. Not only do these things look awesome, they look really cool, um, but they are completely functional. Uh, this car has the big wing on the back, which creates a, a down force on the rear wheels, but that also creates an up force on the front end of the car. So what these do is these actually push air back down, causing the, the car to be tighter to the ground and a little more pressure on the front tires. So it balances it out. So um, if you're gonna take it to the track, this is almost a must have. And if you're just wanting to have it for looks, take a look, these things look awesome. So uh, guys, if you guys are interested in wanting, getting one of these, uh, go to Extreme Online Store. I'm going to put that information here on the screen. They'll be able to help you with this. Not only that, but all of your Camaro parts. They've got a pile of different ones. The whole aero kit. They've got the different types of spoilers as well as the big wing. Um, and they even have some really cool, and I mean nice, car seats, uh, car covers for these. You can't even tell that they're a, car, uh, a seat cover 
They look just like the seats. Uh, I'll be doing a video on those. Um, we did it in uh, Michelle or in Jenny's car uh, not too long ago um, on in her Corvette, and you guys have seen that. Um, and they have these now for the Camaro also. So they've sent us a set. We just haven't had time to video it yet, but you'll be seeing that. So uh, like I said, be sure and check out their stuff. Now, as far as us goes, if you guys have not already subscribed to the channel, please do. It really helps all of the algorithms. It helps you find us on YouTube, helps others find us on YouTube, as well as on the internet. And uh, so it, it helps us with our sponsorships and um, it, it just helps all the way around. So please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and that way you'll be alerted of all of our, up, our next uploads. And guys, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later.